Hey friends, uh, John from Dragonfly here. Today I wanna talk about uh, getting around website blocks. So lately, uh, it seems like more and more, almost every day I'm seeing in the news that uh, certain countries or certain ISPs are blocking websites, blocking people from accessing websites. And um, I don't know, that kind of annoys me. So it's just one of these things. I wanted to make a little, a little guide to explain why uh, or, or how websites are blocked, um, just kind of the, the mechanics behind it, and then how to get around those blocks if you actually want to see those websites that are being blocked for whatever reason. So. Uh, so that being said, um, most websites are blocked using something called DNS. Uh, and DNS stands for, I think, believe it's domain name service or domain name system. Either way, it's one of the underlying protocols that makes the internet work. Uh, when you go to a website like google.com, you're not actually going to uh, that, that friendly URL that, that you and I can remember. You're going to an IP address. The IP could be something like 172.65.124.95 or whatever. Those numbers are very difficult for people to remember, but that's what machines need. That's what machines use to connect to each other. So uh, DNS was invented so that uh, you and me can go to little URLs like google.com or yahoo.com because those are easy for us to remember. And then the machines translate those easy names for humans to remember into IP addresses that they actually go to connect with. And that's, in a nutshell, it's very oversimplified, but that's basically how DNS works. Uh, and there are a number of DNS servers that are around the internet that are kind of like the highest level authoritative DNS servers uh, where all of those records live. And, and when, you, uh, when you go to a website, most likely, you're using your ISP's DNS server. If you haven't made any changes to your internet connection at all, then you're just using your ISP's DNS server. And that's the key to all of this is that they kind of rely on your ignorance uh, to, to block websites from you and things like that. So um, they make changes on their DNS servers, on, their, on, their, on the ISP's own DNS servers that block you from going to these websites. So um, that's kind of in a nutshell how DNS works. And uh, so the, the best way to get around these site blocks, you know, one last thing that I'll say is that, I mean, if a site's been taken down, if the host of that website has, you know, or the company that was hosting a website, if they delete that account or they suspend it or whatever, then a website's down. There's no getting to a down website. Uh, but these blocks that we've been seeing uh, more and more of recently uh, across the world, and even I've had people comment on some of my other videos, people from different parts of the world saying, hey, this helped me get to, uh, you know, get past uh, censorship, uh, government censorship and that kind of thing. So that's another reason why I wanted to make the video. Um, you know, back in the day, nothing was ever blocked. And that's something that we're seeing more and more of now. And it, it kind of drives me crazy. So I'm hoping the right people might end up seeing this video and it will help them. So that being said, if you don't want to use your ISP's DNS server, which is most likely where the block is coming from, you have a couple options. You can pay for a VPN, uh, you know, and that's something that, like I said, there are some free ones, but you also have to pay for them. When you enable that VPN, you're now using the VPN server's DNS, uh, and then you can resolve websites that may be blocked in your country or your region. Uh, you can use what's called a proxy server, and I'll leave some links below to proxy servers. And then what you're doing is you're actually going to another server and then having that server send the request out to fetch whatever website you want. You're using their DNS and their internet connection, and it's a way to view a website that may be blocked on where, where your computer is, but not where the proxy server that you're going through is. The thing about proxy servers is, again, they can be, um, they can be slow. Uh, it's kind of weird if you need to interact with a website that you're going to, it can be hard to do that through a proxy server. Also, some of them run ads. Um, you never really know where that information is gonna end up when you're using a proxy server or whatever. So, I don't know, it's, you know your mileage may vary with those. Uh, but the one really easy change that almost anyone can do on their home environment, not in a work environment, because in a work environment, these changes are probably locked down and you would have to either use uh, really probably a proxy server because you're probably not going to be able to install and use a VPN. Uh, and at the same time, you probably won't be able to make DNS changes on a work machine. But on your own home machine, that's where you can change your DNS servers very easily uh, and it doesn't cost money and there's actually some advantages to it. 
Um, the one thing I will say is that if you make these changes, it's actually better to make them on your router uh, because your, your router is most likely what's handing out, it's called DHCP, you can look for DHCP settings in your router. Um, and your router is probably handing out IP addresses and DNS settings to everything on your network. Um, there's so many different kinds of routers and, and, and different ways to make those adjustments. I, I really can't cover it in this video, um, but Long story short, what, what I've been seeing is that people have been asking, oh, hey, well, if I change my DNS to this server, is it okay? Can I still do my online banking? I mean, is there, is there any vulnerability if I do this? So the answer to that is no. The, the, it's perfectly fine to do this. It's perfectly safe. It's not gonna break anything. Um, it's better to do it in your router so it'll affect all the computers on your network, but if you just need to do it on your one computer so that you can unblock, so you can go to a website or whatever, then you can do it there too, and I will show you how to do it just on a Windows computer at the end of this video. Um, doing it on, I, I mean, if you're using Linux, you probably don't need this guide. Uh, and I, I don't know how to do it on a Mac, I'm sorry, I don't really just, I don't use Macs that much, but hopefully you can find a guide for that. Um, so having said that, there are four big free DNS providers that you can change your DNS to. I wanna explain who they are, what they are, what the differences are between them, and then, at the, like I said at the end, I'll show you how to make the change. So the big one that you see all the time that people are always using is Google's DNS servers. So this is actually, DNS servers that are run by Google. And the addresses, the primary is 8.8.8.8, uh, .8 and the secondary server is 8.8.4.4. Uh, so the advantages to using uh, Google, and actually one of the advantages of not using your ISP's DNS server, is that um, ISP's DNS servers don't tend to be very high performance servers, and they can also make little adjustments on their own servers if they wanna show you ads, like if you mistype a URL, um, you know, they can advertise to you and stuff that way. So I actually, I mean, it's one of the first changes I make uh, to my own networks or what, like when I go and I'm working on a work network somewhere, uh, the first thing I do is get off the ISP's um, name servers. It's, it's like literally one of the first changes I make when I, uh, when I take over a network. So like I said, uh, the big one is, uh, is, is Google, so 8.8.8.8 uh, .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. Now, um, the advantages to the Google DNS server is that they um, work, uh, they're, they're very fast, high performance, and the chances of them going down is very slim, um, but at the same time, like everything else Google does, they collect all your DNS requests, they, they collect all your information, they know who you are, um, they have IDs attached to you based on what you're signed into, uh, you know, especially if you have a Gmail account, but even if you don't, if you're signed into various things like YouTube or uh, whatever, um, they, they track you, they track your DNS requests, they know what websites you're going to, they sell it to people, they, uh, they know um, uh, what websites you're browsing and, and whatever they use that information for, I'll let you use your imagination. So um, that would be a reason why you may not want to use Google DNS. Um, there's another one called Quad9. So the primary is 9.9.9.9 .9 and the secondary is 149.112.112.112. Uh, Quad9, again, it works very well, very fast performance. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a system that's run by law enforcement as far as I, I know. So you can you know, decide if you wanna use that or not. Um, there's another one called OpenDNS that's been around forever. That's owned by Cisco. So again, you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, the primary is 208.67.222.222. The secondary is 208.67.220.220. Uh, and then the last one and the one I wanna kind of focus on here is Cloudflare. So uh, I like uh, Cloudflare's DNS server uh, and that's 1.1.1.1 and then the secondary is 1.0.0.1. And you've probably seen, uh, I've been noticing tons of YouTube videos lately telling you to change your DNS to 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. um, the reason I like it is because Cloudflare supports uh, encrypted SNI, and I have a whole other video about that, um, it, which basically encrypts your DNS requests as long as the web server that you're, you, A, you have to configure it on your browser itself, and right now, as far as I know, only Firefox supports it, and again, I have a video on how to do that. Uh, secondly, um, the website you're visiting also has to um, support that technology, and uh, if they're on Cloudflare, which a lot of uh, people do use, then it, it, it's supported automatically. I like the fact that they're kind of going out of their way to 
to protect people's privacy, that they're they're implementing these changes to uh, to give people a little bit more privacy when they're browsing the web and things like that. So personally, right now, I've been using the Cloudflare DNS servers, uh, and that would be the one that I would recommend out of these four. Um, very fast performance, and like I said, if you enable encrypted SNI and you use the Firefox browser, you can actually encrypt those DNS requests. Um, so that being said, uh, I'm gonna move on now to where I'm gonna show you where you can make those changes. Uh, and just know that you, you, every time you go to a website, you have to query a DNS server to get there. So you're either going to use your ISP's um, DNS server, which, you're, which is gonna be configured automatically because you have your ISP's equipment in your house and they're the ones that are telling your computer what to use, but you can manually make that change and that's how you can get around these blocks. So uh, I hope you find this helpful. You know, sorry, I know it's a little bit long-winded here, but I was just trying to explain it for people that didn't understand and so that they know that this is a safe change to make. Uh, but of course, you know, when you're making these changes, just know how to back them out in case something doesn't work after you make the change, but it, it shouldn't break anything. Um, so I'm gonna move on to a little guide on how to do it in Windows, and uh, we'll see you there. All right, guys, real quick. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to change DNS settings on your network card. Uh, a little shortcut here. If you type uh, ncpa.cpl, uh, you can see this little applet comes up and just click on that. It's a quick way of getting to all your network adapter uh, connections. It just, it on Windows 10, it's like 50 clicks to get here. So I'm showing you the quick way. I'm not gonna edit DNS on my active network card. I'm just gonna show you on one that I'm not using right now. So what you do is you just double click on your network card. If it's a Wi-Fi, double click on that. It brings up the properties. And then you're gonna double click on the internet uh, protocol version four TCP IP, boom, double click that. And then on the bottom here, just change the DNS server to, let's say, 1.1.1.1, and then 1.0.0.1, and then just hit OK, and give it a second, and, uh, and then you'll be fine. Then you should be able to browse to a site that's been blocked by your ISP's DNS. Like I said, the other thing that you can do is go into your router and use that uh, to unblock it, um, or... Um, or use a, use a proxy server as well. So uh, I'll put links to all that stuff below in the description. And thanks again for watching my video and we'll talk to you soon.